Hi and welcome to my channel. I am Chad from Chad DIY and today is an exciting day in the shop. We are reviewing a brand new laser cutter. This is a MechPow 10 watt laser, so let's get started. Now my channel in the past, I reviewed a lot of the high-end diode lasers. This is what I classify as an ultra budget model. This can be bought on sale for under $300, which is incredible value. So I'm not gonna show a full assembly on this laser cutter, but I will go around and show a few key spots that I kinda had a few issues with with assembling it to kinda help you out during your process. For assembly of the machine itself, all you're really gonna need is a Phillips screwdriver. It's really that easy. So when opening it, you're gonna have the four separate rails, one for each side, and it wasn't super clear to me in the manual what rail goes where. So what you wanna do is this front corner is where you're gonna want that limit switch. So as you can see, the measurements also line up right there. So you want the two measurement side on the front with the front controller right there. So another little point of confusion I did have with assembly is how to get the belt tightened. So the belt's gonna go around the stepper motor, which is pretty obvious, but then it's also gonna be it screwed in so it gets tight. So you're gonna want that screw. You're also gonna want the washer. The manual does include the washer, but make sure you don't forget that or else this belt's gonna just flop loose. All right, so the two main connections you're gonna make is first off, you're gonna to wanna to connect that limit switch, which is in the corner. So you're looking at the machine. This is gonna be the front left corner. Uh, important with assembly to make sure you have that correct. And also the laser module itself is gonna get uh, clipped in with the wire connectors as well. So the last connection you're gonna to wanna to make is hooking up the air assist. Now this comes with an air assist. This wasn't an uh, add-on, so which is a great feature sometimes. For other machines, you might have to purchase that separately. You're gonna want air of some, some kind, so air assist is really crucial, I think. So the hookup of the air assist is just a tube, the larger tube in the actual air pump itself running, and then you hook up the other end into the laser module itself. Now the machine all set up, and the build quality is actually pretty good. It looks like it's three-quarter uh, aluminum extrusion, I believe that's what they call it. I might be wrong on that, but so I'm guessing that's also a reason how they can get that, that price point down. It's a pretty standard aluminum. Uh, comes together quite nicely. They just have these corner brackets as well. The laser module itself is tiny. It's a 10 watt laser. I've had other 10 watt lasers that are, you know, probably three to four times the size of the actual module. So I'm not sure how they fit such a, uh, so much power in such a little package, I guess. Not that 10 watt is a ton of power but it's a 10 watt laser. So we're gonna see how well it does, I guess, during a testing to see if it actually performs like a 10 watt. But now that we have it all assembled, we're gonna jump over to the software side of things. I'm gonna use Lightburn. You can also use uh, GBRL. I, not exactly sure what that's called. I use Lightburn, but there's another free program you can use. So we're gonna see how it goes setting it up in Lightburn. All right, the first thing you're gonna to need to do is go to the McPowell website and download the driver. Just go to this download center here, driver files, and just choose the one you need. Then once you have it downloaded, it'll be on your desktop, and then you can install the driver. Once that driver is installed, I can start up Lightburn here, go to devices. Now I had to create it manually. I was never able to find, have this laser cutter um, find my laser feature in Lightburn, so I had to create it myself. Then you can go over and choose it now. I use the, I think it's GRBL file. And you're also gonna want, oh, I don't have my laptop plugged in or else I would say like COM11 or COM14, you wanna make sure basically what USB port you're plugged into. Now I can go to my material test here and we can start cutting.
Now that we have the test card done, we can really see the sweet spot kind of in the center of what the setting should be for speed and as well as power um, for the darkness that we want for any of our engraving. So let's uh, do some actual engraving. I'm gonna use a test file. It's just like a picture of a little lion that we're gonna engrave. Uh, so we'll see how that turns out. And here's that little line. We'll try to zoom in. There you go. Hopefully that's in focus there. All right, we'll focus that. So it turned out really well. These dial lasers are great. So this 10 watt, you don't really need a lot of power to do the engraving. 10 watts, really plenty of power. And with the dial laser, how you can control it, you can go from 1% all the way up to 100%. You can really get specific with that. So they do do a, a great job with engraving. Next, we're gonna jump into the cutting side of things. That's where the 10 watt, it's a little on the lower end of power. I know this cut out the eighth inch when I did this engraving, I cut around it. Um, so we know it can cut an eighth inch, but let's kind of see, uh, see what else it can cut. All right, so that cutting test kind of went how I expected it. The eighth inch, it did very well. Uh, all four samples I went through, it cut through fine. Went up to 280, I think it's millimeters per minute is the setting of light burn. Pretty nice clean cuts too. So that worked out really well for the eighth inch. I was kind of expecting that, it's not very thick. The quarter inch uh, struggled a little bit more. It did get through at 160 millimeters per minute. The other two, the other, I guess four, I don't know if you can see that. The 200 millimeters per minute almost went through, but um, yeah, pretty slow going. It's only a 10 watt, so I didn't really expect much more. It did cut through on one pass, so pretty charred up because it has to go so slow, but that is, I guess, to be expected on that. Now, overall, I think this is a really good option, especially in that kind of what I call ultra budget category for just getting started with lasers. You can find this thing for around the $300 mark on sale. It gets below $300, I believe, or not on sale, a little above. So for that price point, it, it's really hard to beat, just starting out especially. And I would say that engraving capability is, uh, is it's pretty good. Dial lasers do very well engraving, so this is no exception on that. So if you do have any questions on this MacPow 10 watt laser, please leave them in that comment section below. I'll provide the link to this laser. Uh, if you're thinking about getting it, please use that link. It's affiliate link. It really helps the channel when you use that affiliate link. It doesn't cost you extra at all. But if you use that link, it helps me out. So I appreciate that. So as always, we'll see you on the next one.